Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and today we'll be doing this or that. Let's get going. So this and that, I will have like two books in front of me and now we'll just like, you know, kind of decide which one will be better. And so I'll be talking about like what it is and all that stuff. So yeah, let's get going. Okay, so starting off with this one, All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace. I think this is like a mermaid pirate of Caribbean, something like that. She will reign as princess of the island kingdom of Sydney, Amora Montana has spent her entire life training to be high and animator, the master of souls. The rest of the realm can choose their magic, but for Amora, it's never been a choice. To secure her place as heir to the throne, she must prove her mastery of the monarchy's dangerous soul magic. And then this one is The Rise of the Vicious Princess by C.J. Van Ryan. Princess Chavez Miller Thorne is the beautiful sword of Kalera, raised to be ruthless and cunning. Her only goal is to hold the war tomb kingdom together long enough to find a path toward peace, with the ancient form of development, even if the cost is her own heart. So, I've actually started reading about 10% in, but I still want to compare it. Um, what will be better? Oh man. Honestly, so far, I think I'm going to make this one, even though I've only been reading like 10%. Just because I think it has way more action than it did this one. I think, from what I can remember, um, this one kind of felt flat, even though it's still really cool. Like, the Master of Souls, hello. So, yeah, and like the cover is really pretty. So I'm just going to go with this one, even though I have not met much done at all, but I think it, it certainly looks interesting anyways than this one. So yeah, and there's just a lot more action in this one, and it's not really boring as of yet, but yeah, I'm going to go with this one. My next book is Curious Tides by Pascal Lasso. And Mary might be a student at the prestigious Algerian College for Lunar Magics, but her healing abilities have always been medical at best. Until a treacherous night in the Dove of Mare, she came's killing group of her classmates and leaves her her as only survivor. Now Emily is plagued by strange and possible powers that no healer should possess. So and we have The Grim of Fates by Hannah Alcalf and Margaret Owen. A prestigious school for young sorcerers, the Galileo Academy has recently undergone a comprehensive overhaul, reinventing itself as a mummy academy in which students of all cultures and identities are celebrated. In this new Galileo, every pupil is welcome, but some people aren't so happy with the recent changes. That includes everyone's least favorite professor, Septimius Dropwort, a stodgy old man known for his harsh rules and harsher punishments. But when the professor's body is discovered on school grounds under mysterious circumstances, the academy students must solve the murder themselves before the lens of suspicion turns on them. Again, I have not read The Grimoire of Great Fates. It was actually supposed to be from one of my TBRs, but I never got to it. But I generally enjoyed this a lot. I really liked it. They both have academy schools, as you can see. You know, schools for sorcerers, school for witches, so on and so forth. And they both, I, mean, I don't know, like, they both of it has to do with murder and like, how, you know, murder in Fortnite was when they all drowned except for Emily, but this one is actually being murdered by off the professor. Honestly, I think I'm not gonna have to go with this one again just because it, I really did enjoy it. And so, I really like the storyline, I like the characters, even though there could have been some better moments between the characters. The only thing I didn't like was Emily. I did not really like her character at all. I thought she was selfish and used people for her own games. And so, but so, I still enjoyed this and so. Yeah, once I read this, maybe it will change. Who knows? My next book is Zara by S.J. Jones, and I believe there's like a magical girl genre where she has to fight like this demon and she figured out she has powers. So, or she really has powers, I believe. Yeah, I believe she really has powers. And like there's this mysterious plague and she joins like a secret and built a liberation society called the Guardians of Dawn. So, and in this one, um, it is Song of Silver, Silver Flame Like Night by Amiri Rangel. I forget what's this one about. 
Once Ian had a different name, now she goes by the by the one that led to colonize his cave of one. They invaded her kingdom, killed her mother, and outlawed her people's magic. Oh, okay. I think she had like these powers, and then she's supposed to keep secret. She spends the night as a song girl in Hong Kong, in a city transformed by the conquerors, and her day is scavenging for what she can find of the past. Anything to understand the strange milk burn into her arm by her mother in her last act before she died. Yeah. So both of them still have that magic powers in here, but which one? This is hard. I don't know which one I want. Uh, I think I might go with the Zala, even though I did enjoy it. There were some things that kind of bothered me, like the moments. And I thought the guy, I forget his name was. Mom is his name. That took me, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but I think I just didn't like the romance and I didn't really like how he acted. He was such a whiny baby, so that annoyed me. But I really liked the battle, like the final battle. I thought I wish it was a little bit more of the final battle. Uh, so I think I'm gonna, yeah, but still, I think I'm gonna go with this one. So I actually don't have the other book because I believe I have donated it. But this one is a one that tries by Sarah Ella. Solve the clues, face your fears, survive the trials. All Ella's Lindell wanted wants is to escape her normal life in Oxford to find the parents who abandoned her ten years ago. But she gets more than she bargained for when her older sister Charlotte is arrested for having the infamous one the dream. The key to unlocking the curious one the land reality. And the other one I want was a Billy who was called the Sun Trials by Aiden Thomas. I believe like they have like these trials that they have to go through to being up the this god. Something like that. I can't remember for the life of me, but so it's actually called the Sun Bella Trials by Aiden Thomas. So this was like a new Mexican inspired and there's like these trials that they have to go through. The window comes light and life to all the temples and many of the soul, but the loser has the greatest honor of all. There will be sacrifices to soul, the body used to fuel the sunstones that will protect the people of Rainier the Soul for the next 10 years. So, yeah, that, that was what the was, like a competition game. But honestly, I think I'm going, going to go with this one, even though I believe I also had some problems with it. Like, I feel like Alice's backstory wasn't fleshed out enough, and I think there was like a weird cliffhanger. Man, I don't know. Yeah, and it's got like a weird, um, Cliffhanger, but I don't, I didn't really like how she portrayed Jabberwock. I don't think he was necessarily a villain to begin with, but I think like the trials could have been more. I just found that they were really flat. But in the other one, <laughs> the Sun Bearer Trials, I like the trials better in that one, but the story was okay. I just didn't really like the character, but. Uh, Maybe the one the lunch trials I might have to go with, just because I find myself less complaining than the Sun Bell trials, but yeah. I might go with this one. My next two are House of Moods and Women by Erin A. Craig. Despite dreams of adventure far beyond the Starlet Shores, 18 year old village and farmers has remained, and her family sustained high more with her older sister Camille. While the rest of the family has scattered across the media. So then she had like these dreams and powers coming up, she was able to see ghosts. But then she also knows that something is weird going on at the other house where she goes and gets married. So that yeah, and I thought I'll compare this one with Holland. And the other one was Holland by Katrina Lino. Following her father's death, Jen North Thomas and her mom moved from Southern California to the dreary Dale and Payne, an old house in Maine, where her mother grew up. All they want is a flesh top, but behind the looks madness door looks a history that leaves from feeling more alone and more tormented. So honestly, I feel like those two books are like almost the same thing because I feel like both of the characters feel tormented. Uh, because like, I remember with Verity, she just wanted an, an escape from High Moor because the rest of her family went different ways, so I feel like she also got tormented because she felt trapped in that mansion. So I feel like these two books will always be the same, 
in that sense and also they both have like a creepy atmosphere vibe to the books as well and they are both looking for something so and also they also f uh, are feeling like grief and sadness so I think in these two books will go well but if I have to pick a favorite I think I still will pick House of Lives and Ruin just because I still feel like it was well done. We are already familiar with the characters because of the previous books. It's House of Salt and so on, which I loved. But I just like the story more. I thought it was way creepier than Horrid. And there are things that just make sense at times. So that was, that was one that doesn't really make sense and why Valentin didn't think of it. I don't want to spoil too much, but I just think this is better because of the creepiness, so this one is a winner. My next book is Gods of Jane and Shadows by Silly Moreno Gracia. The Mayan god of death sends a young woman on ha having a life changing journey in a stark fairy tale inspired by Mexican folklore. The Jazz Age is in full swing by Cassiopeia. Toon is too busy learning, cleaning the floors of a wealthy grandfather's house to listen to any fast tunes. Nevertheless, she dreams of a life far from her dusty small town in southern Mexico, a life she can call her own. And I believe she also has to go to like this adventure, and then she opens it and she flees like this male god by accident, who is requesting her help to recover his throne from his brother. So, that's her adventure. And then for this one, A Curse of the Scepter Queen by Jenny Elder Moak. And Samantha Knox put away her childish fantasy for her archaeological adventure the day her father didn't return home for the Great War, retreating to the safety of the antique bookshop where she works. But when a mysterious package arrives with a damaged iron inside, Sam's peaceful life is obliterated. So again, it's like the same book as this one, but it's different. Like she also goes to an adventure and she has to find these ancient order that she has found. Who, and the ancient order has like this dark purpose. And so, yeah. And it's like Tomb Raider almost. If you know Tomb Raider, then you know about this book. But it's almost like Tomb Raider. So... Mm, I think I might go with Curse of the Scepter Queen just because it's a little bit more enjoyable than this one. I feel like this one should have been more darker than it is. It's too much playful. I mean, she really released a god of death, so it should have been a little bit more serious. But and I kind of like the Avengers of this one. I thought it was cool how she was surviving like all these singles and all that stuff. And like the riddles, I thought the riddles were really nice. So I really like this one more than this one. So yeah. So if you want Indiana Jones to read a Nathan Drake, I still feel like you can still give these to a go. My next two books are The Robin Gray by Christine Lynn Houghton. After the death of her sister, 17 year old Violet Saunders finds herself dragged to Fort Pass, New York. Violet may be a newcomer, but she soon learns her mother isn't. They belong to one of the revered founding families of the town where storm bells hang above every doorway and danger looks in the depths of the wood. And this one is The, po the Poison Season by Mara Rutherford. Lilo has spent her entire life on Endor, coexisting with the bloodthirsty forest and respecting the poisonous flank that protects her island from outsiders who seek to destroy it. But as much as Lilo cares for her community, she struggles to accept that her younger brother will be exiled by his next birthday, unless he gains the magic of a chanted song so vital to everyone. So again, both of them are dealing with creepy forests and outsiders, even though Lilo is not really an outsider. But Violet is. Um, I think I'm gonna go with the Divine Grey just because I feel like the characters are more in depth than these guys are. And I just like the adventures more. I thought it was dark and creepy and I just love the atmosphere of it. And plus, I really like the writing of this book as well because, like, I honestly thought it just matches with the vibe of this book. So, there was some. Memorable moments with this book than this one, but 
This one is just um, more flammable so, than this one. Okay, and we have Ace of Spades by Falada Abink Emili. When two of the Muse Public Academy students, Devon Richards and Shia Marka Adebayo, are selected to be part of the Elite School Senior Play Fest, it looks like the year is off to an amazing start. After all, not only does it look great on college applications, but it officially points them into the running for Mac Valedictorian, too. As Aces, and then, so they also have like the society, I believe. Like, yeah, it's someone who goes by Aces, who gives them like these text messages to reveal secrets about the two of them that turn their lives upside down and threaten every aspect of their carefully planned futures. And then my next one is A Lesson of Vengeance by Victoria Lee. Felicity Melrod is back at the Delaware School, perched in the Catskill Mountains, the centuries-old Ivy Covered Campus, was home until the tragic death of her girlfriend. Now after a year away, she's returned to finish high school, even she has her old room in Godwin House, the exclusive dormitory moved to be haunted by the spirits of five Delaware students. Still, some say were witches that Dalla may find all die mysteriously, one after another, right on Godwin grounds. And when history begins to repeat itself, Felicity will have to face the darkness that Dalla may and, her, and herself. So I feel like both of them will have secrets as in some type of way. I have read this much, so I'm trying to remember what happened in this book, but I have not read this one, but I still feel like they're similar. Like they have these secrets, some but both something happened, and honestly, I don't know, I might go with this one even though I have never read it. I found this book to be a little bit boring, and I think from when I read it, it was a little bit slow paced too, I believe. So, I don't know, I'm hoping this book will be great once I finally read it, but... I don't like the aces, we, and we have Valen Victorian, we have secrets going on around. I think this should be a, like a fun blast to read. So it just sounds more interesting too. And my final one is Star Nardo by Shiveta Takara. If the, night school, if the night sky holds many secrets, it holds she tell mysteries, secret the closet. A secret that explains why her hair is the silver of starlight, or why some nights the star or she tell by her name. In the Donna of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan, it's of a following Zing Yin, and she has to save her mother, who is the, you know, Donna of the Moon Goddess, who is Shang He. Shang He has been trapped in her own celestial home, and because of that, Shang Yin has to go down to the mortal realms to find out how to save her mom. Honestly, like, they're both dealing with celestial beings, uh, but the cover is so pretty. I mean, look at these two. And I believe, and they also have, like, these some kind of trials as well. Like, she has to go on these many quests to be able to free her mom, and she also has to go through some trials to prove that she's worthy, I believe. Yes, because I believe her father was dying, and she kind of wanted to save her father, so that's why she went. I believe, and it was also more of like a destiny calling as well. But I think I'm going to with Dawn of the Moon Goddess just because I feel like it was more fleshed out than this book. And I think the quest was more intriguing as well, but I really don't like how the author have put the trials for this one, like way at the end of the book. It should have been at least by halfway of the book already. Like we really got like maybe five chapters of the trials or something like that and it wasn't really fleshed out i feel like so i would have picked this one because the trials sounded so cool but i just wish we had one of them instead of being at the end so this guy is a win okay so those are all my books of this or that let me know which one you would like you will like from those piles and let me know if you agree or disagree if you have read those books. But otherwise, please like, comment, subscribe so you'll be notified every time I post and I will see you in my next one. Bye!